Welcome to my second Pygame tutorial. Uh, this one focuses on uh, doing speech bubbles. I recently added them into my game and I think it's really helped the role-playing immersion aspect of the game. Um, it gives the NPCs a bit of life and personality and they're also really easy to do. So I thought I'd make a small tutorial. Again, all the code and images are freely available on GitHub. So if you don't want to listen to the explanation, you can just go there and grab them. Um, all right, let's make some speech bubbles. So in this tutorial, we're going to be um, creating simple speech bubbles, boxes above our character heads. Um, what I've created for this minimal example is um, a simple player and a simple NPC. And these are just two um, drawings that I've taken out of my game, but um, I thought it'd be nicer to use these rather than just the colored squares. Uh, so what we can do with the player is just move left or right and the NPC is just a simple logic to turn and face the player um, as they're moving by. Um, yeah, again, the code is, is very simple. We just have um, a read image function for reading in the images, um, a player and NPC class, um, we initialize them. And then in our game loop, we have our update and draw sections. Okay, so, but what we'll be doing today is writing the draw speech bubble function and then implementing it into our player and NPC classes. So let's let's create this function. So I think I'm going to call it whoops, define draw speech bubble. And the arguments that we need to pass this to create these speech bubbles is firstly the screen object because we'll inside this function we'll be drawing onto the screen directly um, text so the string that we want to um, print in, inside this uh, speech bubble um, we need the color of the text um, we will be including a background rectangle so we're also going to pass it a background rectangle color um, the position of the speech bubble and then finally the size of the text we're going to use okay so quite a few parameters but i think these these are all fairly necessary for creating a speech bubble um because we're using font oh sorry because we're using text in in pygame we do need to initialize a font object um there are a few ways that you can do this but i'm going to go for the I think somewhat standard way of initializing a font from the font object and using sysfont. Now what sysfont will do is search for your system for available fonts. And you can choose which font to use by passing this name. Um, in this tutorial, we're going to keep it very, very simple and just pass it none, which is going to take the default font that Pygame will use on, on your system. Uh, the second parameter we're going to use is just size and we and we get that from one of the parameters uh, we're not going to use bold or italic but um, feel free to now that we've initialized a font um, with all drawing in pygame we need a, a surface and a, and a rectangle so the other objects we're going to create is text surface and we can use the font object that we just created and it has a render method and inside that render method we can pass it some text string and as the function documentation says um, it draws text on, on this new surface um, we're also going anti-alias we're just going to leave as true um, we're going to pass it the color of the text here and there is a background argument and that's for controlling the background color of the surface um, however we're going to create another rectangle and surface for the background so we're going to leave this as none finally we need to um, control the position um, of the text so we're going to create a text rectangle and we're going to take the dimensions of the surface we're going to use the get rect method and because we want these um, text bubbles to appear above our sprites sort of heads um, 
the position that we pass, um, we want this to form the, the mid, the middle of the bottom of this text rectangle. So I'm just going to leave it like that. Now we can create the background um, object for these um, speech bubbles. So we're going to go ahead and create this background rectangle object. And what we can do is we can copy the text rectangle because it has um, dimensions that we want, but also the position that we want. So we, it's easy just to go ahead and copy this. However, we are going to make this slightly bigger to give a bit more space to the text. And to do this, we can use a very useful function called inflate IP, which stands for inflate in position. And what we can do is we can take a rectangle and we can inflate it, enlarge it in both the X and Y um, directions. Um, but it also, this new rectangle will remain centered. So this is why this is a really useful function. So we're going to um, inflate 10 pixels in both the X and Y direction. Um, to give the speech bubbles a little bit more um, definition, um, we're going to create a frame. So to do this, we're going to create another rectangle and call this frame rect. Um, we're going to start off by copying this time the, the background rectangle, um, just like we did before. And again, we want the frame to be the frame rectangle to be slightly bigger than the background rectangle, so that when we draw the background rectangle on top of the frame rectangle, you, we can just see a little bit of the frame um, sticking out. So we're going to again inflate in place and this time just to give it a small frame of four pixels we're gonna do that so now we have our text um, our background rectangle and our frame rectangle we can now draw all of this on the screen so the first thing that we need to draw is the frame rectangle because uh, this is the the largest of the surfaces um, so first argument is screen in this draw.rect function. Um, then we need to pass it a color and we're going to use the, the color for the frame will be the same as the text color. So let's do that. And then the frame rect object itself. We repeat for the background rectangle, this time giving it the, the background color giving it the rectangle and then finally we're going to blitz the screen blit the text on the screen so we're going to blit this text surface in the position of the text rectangle okay so that's that's the function complete um, now all we have to do is to insert it into our um, sprites so that when the game loop is running it will draw these um, speech rules. So first we're going to go inside the player and just test that this draw speech bubble function works. Um, we already have a draw method here and that has a screen so we can just stick in this draw speech bubble function down here, pass it the screen, the text, which is going to leave us hello. Um, let's do uh, white on white on black. Um, so let's, I always forget which one, which way around these are. Uh, let's try this first. Um, position, again, as I said before, uh, we want this to appear at the top of the, the, uh, the sprite's head, so we're going to pass it um, the mid-top position of the rectangle, and we're going to um, leave the size as, as 25. Okay, so now we can run our game again, and hopefully we'll see some text appearing above the player's head. Okay, so the, the, the text, the text, the, the speech bubble is there. Um, I did get my RGB values the wrong way around, but that doesn't really matter. Um, we can just leave it like this. Now we can also put it into our uh, NPC. And maybe we want to have some logic that the NPC talks to the player only when the player is in a certain vicinity of the NPC. So 
to do this, we can add a Boolean variable to the NPC called speaking, which we're going to initialize as false, so that when the NPC is speaking, then it will blit this text. If not, it won't. Um, then we're going to have some logic in its update function to to um, to know whether the player is in is in a certain um, vicinity. So we're going to say if the absolute value of self dot player dot rect so the the x position um, minus the self dot rect dot x let's say is below one hundred pixels, and we we use the absolute value here because we don't mind if the player is left or right of the um, of the NPC. We just want to know is it within a hundred pixels. And we're saying if it is less than a hundred pixels, um, we can say self dot speaking equals true. Otherwise, we're going to leave it as self dot speaking equals false. Okay. So here's our logic for determining whether the NPC is speaking or not. Then down in our draw method, we can say if self dot speaking um, draw speech bubble again screen. We'll say hello player. Um, we can use slightly different RGB values. Um, so we'll go for some yellow. Uh, let's do 165, Position same as before. Self dot rec dot mid top and 25 pixels in size. Okay, so now we can test this out. Oops. Oops, this should be just player. Okay, there we go. So now when we cross this NPC with our player, it's going to print out this yellow speech bubble in, yeah, in yellow. Um, and that's all it is to it. Um, all that really remains is a lot of work on the aesthetics to um, create really um, pretty and interesting speech bubbles and then also using alternative fonts. Um, this will help create some better, better interactions with your non-player combats. But um, yeah, that's everything from the tutorial. Um, yeah, please leave a comment if you enjoyed it or something wasn't clear. Um, and yeah, thanks for thanks for watching.